Hello there and welcome to Medical Mondays, not on a Monday. I'm Dr. Watson. I'm a Gen Z doctor who does smart and dumb things pertaining to medicine. And today we're going to be talking about the time that I went over not only one, but two residence heads. So I wanted to talk about this because I was watching Online Meta, not sponsored obviously, and he was talking about bureaucracy and the hierarchy of power basically, and I remember being a little medical student and feeling that, and it is true, like it is basically the med students, the intern, the resident, and then the attending, which is, you know, almighty and all that. And it made me think about the time that I went over all the rules basically. And I especially wanted to talk about this because it was brought up a lot during interviews. So if you don't know, a big question that they like to ask during interviews for residency is talk about a time that you didn't agree with someone and how did you go about that? So they don't usually specify like their rank, like they don't specify if it was a nurse, if it was another medical student. I don't think they usually expect it to be a resident. So every time I told this story during interviews, it seemed like they kind of respected that I was honest and they respected the outcome. I never got like a, I can't believe you did that. It was always like, wow, that must've been hard for you and I'm happy that of the outcome. So without further ado, let's get into the story. So basically this was my first ever clinical rotation. I had just taken step one and I started my internal medicine rotation. And this week in particular, I was on the ICU floor and I would usually help write the notes to admit a patient into the ICU from like the ER or on the floor. So it was about five o'clock at night and a daughter had brought her father into the ER because he started having slurring of speech and she noticed that he was having a little bit of weakness on his right side. So in the ER, they did a CT scan of his head and they realized that he did have a hematoma. Add Kaylee here, and today's video is sponsored by me. If you don't know, I publish a coloring book specifically for medical students and a pocket-sized soap note template book, both of which are available on Amazon. A smile always comes to my face when I see friends, family, and followers color their anxieties away with my book. I created the template book when I noticed how anxious medical students were to fill out the popular multi-page HMP templates and then proceed to report non-pertinent findings during rounds until the attendings eyes glazed over or they were scolded for wasting their time. The feedback has shown the majority of customers are repeat buyers because they love that it has cut down their preparation time, increased their confidence when presenting a patient, and is easily accessible since it fits in just about every pocket. I also sell handmade products on Etsy, including scrub caps and a customizable white coat hanger, both of which are a great gift for yourself or a loved one. If you do not want to buy a product but still want to support the channel, you can submit a donation, use my affiliate links in the description, or show your love with a like, share, comment, or click on the subscribe button to feed the hungry YouTube algorithm. Thank you, and let's get back to the video but it looked stable, so there wasn't any immediate action that they wanted to take, which is common protocol if you have some kind of bleeding in the brain but it's not actively hemorrhaging and it's stable, it doesn't seem like your clinical signs are progressing, then the next steps are to admit them to the ICU and just do neuro checks every hour for 24 hours. So that's what our team was there for. So it was me, the PGY2, and the PGY3. So basically the second year resident and the third year resident almost about to graduate her residency. And we all went into the ER room and I did a neuro exam because I had just gotten done with a neuro research and I had done a lot of neuro exams so I felt comfortable doing it. And it was true, he did have a bit of weakness on his right side, his reflexes were normal and he had slight slurring. His memory was intact and he did seem very strong, but his baseline was great to begin with because he was 56 and he probably was stronger than most of the people that I know. He was definitely more fit than I am. He was doing like 100 push-ups a day and he was very mentally and physically sharp because he's a pilot, so he made sure to be sharp. So starting off with that baseline, I made sure to note that in the HPI as well. So the next day, it's about 5.30 in the morning because rounds begin at 6, so you're supposed to start rounding on your patients, and I was assigned him because I had seen him the night before. So whenever I went to check up on him, see how he's doing, I immediately noticed that something was very wrong. The day before, he could conversate very normally, but now he was trying to talk, but it seemed almost like the Brokas or Wernicke, where he was kind of saying the word salad, so more Wernicke. He was smiling the whole time, but he was kind of speaking gibberish, and even though he was right-sided dominant, so he used his right hand for most things, he was using his left hand to lift up his right arm to do things. 
and just everything seemed left-sided dominant. He was using his left arm and really not using his right side at all. So to me, this seemed like a very quick deterioration. He went from being very easy to understand, super strong, to barely being able to pick up anything with his right side, an intelligible speech, and extreme slurring of his words. So I immediately ran to the residence room, which this is also a big no-no. Usually whenever you see the residents are busy, you don't interrupt them while they're putting in orders or doing their notes. You usually want them to finish up with everything before you start rambling about your patient. So I immediately went to them and I was like, okay, this patient in room whatever, it seems to have some pretty severe deterioration overnight. I think we have to do something right now. And so the second year that saw the patient with me last night went to the room and she seemed kind of iffy about it. So she brought her third year into the room. And then when the third year got in there, they both basically kind of agreed like, okay, he seems to be in the state, but we did document these things. So in the note, it did say that he had some slurred speech and weakness. So they said, actually, we're not going to do anything about that right now. But I felt incredibly uncomfortable with that. So rather than just wait for him to deteriorate more or for the attending to get there, I messaged the other resident that was on the team because he also had a neurology resident on the team as well and I had done research with her so I had her personal number and I just messaged her and I said this is your patient I think you need to get here right now and she came with her purse in hand she had just gone to the hospital and as soon as she got there she threw her purse to the ground and started assessing the patient and she knew that something was wrong immediately just like I did and within seconds she called a brain attack so if you don't know what a brain attack is it's basically just kind of like all hands on deck we got to get this patient down to CT scan right now so the nurses were busy so her and I I personally wheeled down this patient to the CT room, made sure that he got a scan, and we did see something super severe. He went from having a stable hematoma to an active hemorrhage. And before the results even came back, the neurosurgeon came in and he could also tell that something was wrong, so the physician assistant was immediately on the phone ordering 3% saline and making sure that things were getting done to get him in surgery before the CT scan even came in showing that he had a hemorrhage. And once it was proven that he had a hemorrhage, they brought him immediately to the OR and he did get a craniotomy. So they basically took part of his skull off so that they could stop the bleeding and release the pressure. And because of that, he went into the SICU, which if you don't know, that's usually where patients go after they have severe surgery. And after that, he went back to his regular life. And I honestly believe that if I had not intervened in that moment and gone over those two residents' heads, that that patient would have been way worse off. Time is tissue, especially in the brain, where when bleeding or any kind of liquid increases the pressure too. So not only are you hemorrhaging and losing blood, but you're also increasing the pressure. So it's just so severe and you have to be in so on top of it whenever a patient's hemorrhaging in the brain. And because they went from medical ICU to SICU, I didn't really, you know, gloat or anything. The attending hadn't even gotten there. And after that, I felt very proud of myself, but I definitely didn't run around saying like, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm better than residents or anything. And I definitely respect residents. I definitely know the hierarchy of power, however you would call it. And it was incredibly scary. As a medical student that had just started out, I was an MS3, not even an MS4. Barely, I barely had really treated any patients before that and I might have had a lot to lose if I had gone over their heads and been wrong but at the end of the day patient safety is what really matters and like I said every time I told that story in an interview the attendings or whoever was interviewing me really respected that and I'm happy that that patient gets to go and live a very fulfilling life with their daughter but that being said definitely don't try to be a gunner or anything where you're just saying everyone's having brain bleeds and you don't trust anyone I think that was a very specific case and those two residents went off to get great fellowships and I'm sure they're great physicians now too but it was a great lesson to stick to my guns and make sure that I trust myself but thank you so much for watching make sure to stay part of the journey I'm sure I'm gonna have more vlogs and story times as I go through residency for the next bajillion years and hopefully this shows someone that it's okay to speak up just make sure that you respect that there are people above you and they are more experienced and that's okay but if you're really worried about a patient's safety make sure to speak up i'll see you next medical monday bye